The problem with tendonitis is that it's an itis, which means that there's inflammation, which means that we can't just dive in and do our normal digging like we want to. We can't break stuff up and hope that it loosens up and hope that it makes our client feel better. We've got to deal with the inflammation first, and if we don't, there's nothing we're doing that's right. Tendonitis, or inflammation of a tendon, can show up anywhere there's a tendon, which is pretty much everywhere. But today I'm going to focus on the lateral part of the forearm, and here it's known as lateral epicondylitis, and most people know it as tennis elbow. If you'll notice, I'm starting with a lot of warm-up strokes in the upper arm. Right here, I'm focusing on the brachioradialis, but I want to make sure that we are all aware that tendonitis is never isolated, so you want to address the whole arm, not just the forearm. Enter the ice cube. Tendonitis's worst enemy and your best friend. Make sure you're aware of all the cautions when using ice with a client. You never want to hold it still. You always want to keep it moving. And I like to start with ice because I want to get rid of the inflammation before I can do any of the deeper work. You can use an ice cube or ice that's been frozen in a styrofoam cup. That is always popular. But you want to keep the ice moving and you want to stay in communication with your client. Cover the whole area here and make sure that you are thorough. Once you feel like you've completely gotten the area nice and cold, cover the area, dry it off, and you're ready to start your work. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I love detail. And I think detail is really important when working with muscles, especially here in the forearm. An area like this has so many little muscles that do so many different things. The hand and the fingers can really do amazingly wonderful things. So all of these muscles start up near the elbow at the lateral epicondyle and come down into the hand. So it's important to really make sure that you understand your anatomy here and understand what these muscles do. Tennis elbow usually arises from an overuse injury, so like the repetitive swing of a tennis racket, or pulling up weeds in the garden, or washing dishes, or whatever it is that we do with our hands and our forearms repetitively. So the first thing I want to do once I've iced down the inflammation is dive right into those muscles that are overused and taut. Oftentimes there are trigger points, and so I'm going to attack those first. Because the belly of these muscles is so close to that lateral epicondyle, I'm diving in there and I want to stay in communication with my client about what feels like it's radiating, how intense the pain is, and make sure that once I've worked through the trigger point, I make nice. Nobody wants to feel my thumb sticking into their muscles walking around after I'm done the work. What I'm doing here I would call a delicate pin and stretch. The muscles in the forearm are sinewy and ropey and thin and so they can't be handled like the quads, the hamstrings. They have to be handled with care and being sensitive to what your client is feeling is of the utmost importance. So as I pin down the wrist extensors here, I'm giving the wrist a slight twist and I'm sinking in right to that level where I feel like I'm getting depth and I feel like I'm creating change, but not to the point where I'm creating any more inflammation. We don't need any more of that. As both my client and I feel like these muscles are letting go and releasing that tight grip, I'm going to start to sink in and separate them out a little bit. Again, I want to make sure that I'm not creating more inflammation, so I'm not digging in and frictioning through. I just want to separate these muscles and remind them which muscle lies where and does what.
because these muscles come all the way down and pass through the carpal area on the posterior wrist, I think it's really important to say hi to the wrist when I get down there and give it a good shake. If I feel like my client is responding well and more importantly, if they're at the later stages of their healing process and the tendonitis is starting to really dissipate, I want to sink in deep with an elbow and make sure that I use one of my hands to pin that fascia, all that connective tissue up at the elbow, at the lateral epicondyle, and use my forearm to kind of steamroll all the way down, all the way to the wrist, separating these muscles out and giving them some room to heal. If you know your anatomy and you know your physiology, all the work you do from there is gold. And I'm about to show you why. Knowing that the wrist extensors start up at the lateral epicondyle, I'm gonna sink down and then I'm gonna have my client wiggle their fingers. And I do this because I also know that when you engage a muscle and then you sink down into that muscle after it's been engaged, you're able to sink down a little bit deeper and this knowledge gives me a lot of power. I can also play around with the different movements of the hand. So here I'm having her actually make a fist and then extend her fingers out. So I'm getting a different contraction of those muscles. And in this last clip, I'm simply having her extend her fingers up off the table as far as she can. And each time those muscles are contracting a little bit differently and as I sink down, I'm able to approach the fibers of those extensors in different ways and each one is equally as effective. Once I feel like I've explored that technique pretty thoroughly and just because my demo here only shows it once with each movement doesn't mean you can't do it repetitively. But once I've done that, I'm gonna take my thumbs and slide down, really separating out those extensors, going all the way down into the wrist and ensuring that my client feels the completeness of their forearm, not only from the elbow, but all the way through the wrist and hand. Sometimes tendonitis can arise from doing a repetitive motion that requires a pressure coming from the palm. So if you put your fingers out extended and press down on the palm, like a downward dog pose in yoga, you're going to get that pressure in the wrist and it's going to go up to the forearm. So I like to really explore the carpals and make sure that they're separated out after I've done the work in the forearm. There are a lot of little muscles down into the hand and wrist that I don't want to ignore. And I'm going to show you the radial side and the medial side of the hand in my next video. But from here I'm focusing on the ulnar side. I'm doing a pin and stretch here, sinking down into those lateral ulnar muscles. And then I'm moving the wrist into radial deviation, so I'm sinking down and stretching those muscles out. I want to repeat this pin and stretch technique up the extensors and again if your client is just starting to get tendonitis, if the onset is new, save this for later on in the healing process. This isn't what you want to be doing early on. But if they're starting to really heal and recover and there's a lot of guarding, this is an amazing technique to get that release to sink even deeper. One last quick technique, which I think is the icing on the cake, is to come down in the hand and give the hand some love. Here I'm separating the metacarpals, which is kind of specific, but you can do whatever you want to the hand. Tendonitis in the forearm is often coming from hand movement, so don't ignore the hand. Mm -hmm. 
I can't thank you guys enough for watching and supporting and being my first 100 subscribers to my channel. Like I said earlier in the video, I've got another tendonitis video coming up for the medial aspect of the forearm, which is similar, but if you want to just have a visual of how to do it, it's coming up soon. Don't forget to check it out. Keep being awesome, keep adding to your bag of tricks, and continue to make massage therapy the kick-ass career that we know it to be.